We now rejoin our regularly... Tonight is the explosive end to a Philadelphia landmark. It was one minute past nine this morning when 12,000 pounds of dynamite brought down the old Sears complex on Roosevelt Boulevard. The 14-story clock tower was the final piece to fall. Here's the view from the boulevard at Garland Street. And Chopper 6 was flying overhead as 9 million bricks hit the dirt. The demolition company hired its own camera crews who were allowed to be very close to ground zero. Those cameras offer a good look at the tower coming down in this shot. And there's this view from above. And watch this, the view from right up against the building. Watch the force of the blast coming through those windows. Watch. Thousands of people had to witness that event in person, and John Rollins was with them today. It was a day of mixed emotions. In many quarters around the blast site, there were high spirits, a party atmosphere. In keeping with the season of costumes, the Sears clock tower was accompanied by TNT. A few blocks away, a Royersford man celebrated his 45th birthday. I'm here to start my birthday off with a bang. He was not disappointed. In something like eight seconds, six tons of explosive made the 74-year-old landmark melt away before 15,000 impressed spectators. It was a rush. She was a little nervous, so I had to hold on to her real tight. She was shaking, but it was cool. But among some, there was a hint of sadness, of loss. A little upset. Hi, Grandma! Hi, Mom! Explain to me, what do you mean? Why oh, do you mean it's gone? The Sears building with its tower was the grand old lady of the boulevard. As a temple of commerce, it had outlived its original purpose. Its new owner is going to put up a new mall that would be at home in the suburbs. The same as every other strip mall that's just down the block. I think they should have just kept the tower up. I think they, they should have left it there. Somehow the save the tower. Yeah, because I don't think it should have been torn, around, torn down. Apparently, it was not practical to save the clock tower to incorporate it in the new development. Beth Dietz is bitter. She comes from a Sears family. Her parents met and married while working at Sears. They may take that tower, but we have the pictures, and we have the friends, and we have the family. <laughs> and I hope they're all very happy right now. The Sears building had eight and a half million pounds of steel, nine million bricks. It's all now collapsed rubble, but it won't stay that way for long. The steel will be recycled, the masonry will be crushed and reused. And then the site will be cleared to make way for that new shopping center. John Rollins, Channel 6, Action News. Northeast Philadelphia residents living close to the Sears building went up on the roof to see it happen. Here in the 900 block of Marcella Street, neighbors climbed a ladder to get to the top. And once they were there, their view was terrific. The explosion was fantastic. And it, it, it was really sad, though, too, because it just signified so much change here in northeast Philadelphia. Well, some neighbors in the northeast had the shakes before the implosion. This family lives a few blocks away from the site, the ones we're about to show you here. Several days ago, they started packing up their collections of figurines and vases just to make sure nothing got broken. Well, all the valuables are fine tonight. The owner says she's very glad that she was prepared anyway, even though nothing happened to them. It took a long time to accumulate everything, and I'd like to keep them for a while longer. They say it could take them weeks to get all those things out of the boxes, though, and back on the shelves. One person who got a big jolt out of the implosion was Crystal Lee of Spring Garden. She pushed the ceremonial plunger that started it all. Fire! <laughs> 
Once she retrieved her hard hat, Crystal took a good long look at how she helped this process along. Those who watched her in the viewing area ran for cover, though. You can see that they were so close to the site that dust was raining down on them. You didn't have to be close by in the viewing area to get hit with the dust. As Kristen Z tells us, it was floating all over the Northeast after the implosion this morning. As soon as the nine million bricks hit the ground, a huge cloud of dust formed and loomed over the area. Minutes later, the dust settled. And nearby streets were a muddy mess to the dismay of cars driving on them. Cleaning trucks came out immediately to sweep up, but even with all this heavy-duty cleaning equipment, it was a difficult job thanks to the sheer volume of debris. Yeah, it was dusty. After it was done, the road the boulevard was pretty dusty. It was covered up, white dust. It's pretty messy, sloppy. Check out these parked cars. Here on Whitaker, just a few blocks from the blast site, every hood and every window was covered to the point that you can't see out of them. Some proudly advertised the fact that this was Sears fallout. But make no mistake, the Sears dust spread beyond the immediate area. I'm about three miles away from the former Sears building in a parking lot on Castor Avenue, and every single car here is covered in dust. This man just detailed the car he's selling. Now he has to clean it again. And this man walked up to his freshly cleaned windowsill only to discover a layer of dirt. Vince Natalini says he saw a dust cloud pass through 15 minutes after the implosion. A real dark gray cloud. And it, it came up and enveloped everything. It looked like back to, during the Depression or something with the dust balls. It was that bad. Demolition engineers reassured us that they had removed asbestos from the Sears building before today's blast. So while this looks ominous, they say it's not dangerous. I'm Kristen Z, Channel 6 Action News in Northeast Philadelphia. Well, the dust has settled tonight in northeast Philadelphia, and this is what the dynamite left behind. A huge pile of bricks and debris. The outline of the building is left on the ground. It took 11 months to build the complex in 1920. It was demolished in about eight seconds. And that is our complete story of today's historic Sears implosion.